you know, if you're the CEO of Kroger's, what we didn't need for you, well, I don't want to say Kroger's, so don't go quite there. <laughs> but if you're, if, if, you're, if you're the one to make a decision corporately, why do you think that we would not, a target, you know, like a, a large target, targeted uh, department store would not make it in our neighborhoods. They will make it in our neighborhoods. We spend money every day. Mm -hmm. We spend money every day. And so we need, we need the belief to come back in that we are intentionally important enough for you to say, hey, let's make a change. And even though I can't touch everybody, but the ones I can, I want to be intentional about reaching out and touching them to make a difference. Mm -hmm. Even if it's just one meal, that, that's one, if it's one meal that I bless the family with, that's one night that they don't have to be hungry. Yeah. And I want to be intentional about it to let them know, like, I, I care and I get it. You know, I get, I'm a single mom, I get it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I have about three more questions for you. So my third countdown question is, um, who or what has brought you to this moment in your life? Who is your support system, your help, and everything that you do? Um, I have to say um, my grandmother and grandfather. I grew, up on a, I grew up in Columbus, but everything that we've done uh, was from a little town in North Carolina. And we worked a farm. And I worked the farm till I was 16, you know. So when everybody else was going roller skating here in Columbus in the summertime, Monique was working tobacco. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> so, I mean, but, it, but you know what? It's, I wouldn't trade it for anything. It gave me such a work ethic and such an ethic to be caring about other people genuinely, not because you're going to get something out of it. Sometimes you get nothing but get your feelings hurt or burnt out of it, but you still do it because it's just who you've been created to be and created to do. So I would have to say my grandparents, my um, mother, my sister um, has always been one that would say to me, you want to be the lender and not the borrower. And so anytime I feel like I'm fussing about something, she'll go, well, at least you're not the borrower. So imagine how they have to feel to ask for help. Mm -hmm. So I always like keep that forefront, like I want to be the lender and not the borrower. And so that could be just if my neighbor calls and says, hey, I don't have any food and I'm cooking a meal, I could then say, hey, I cooked a meal. Come on, send the kids over and get this meal and y'all eat on it. She texted me last night like I missed your cooking. And I said, Aww. I'll cook this week for you, you know. But it's, it's just one of those type of things. So they have been um, really, you know, amazing without me tearing up. Amazing. I just really had... Unfortunately, I, I know a lot of people that don't have the amazing roots that I have, but I have very good, strong, amazing roots to know where we exactly where we came from all the way back to uh, the plantation. And so that's been instilled in me and I keep instilling it into my children. So, that's yeah. Um, I still have three questions left out for now because I just thought about it. What's your favorite meal to cook for other people? I just love to cook. In general? I just love to cook. And I, I tell you, I, uh, 2020 was a, was a horrible year for me. And um, uh, I lost my son back in 2017. And then I had like four major deaths with, you know, in 2020. But I can tell you, I selfishly, I tell people I'm being selfish, but whenever I feel like I'm getting into a place of depression, mm -hmm. one thing I have a skill with doing is cooking a lot of food and cooking it quick, cooking it homemade and feeding people. So I'm always like, if I'm getting into that point of depression, I go and feed, you know, I just make, and go feed random people. I'll make up plates, and I know it's kind of weird for somebody to pull up in their white pickup truck and say, hey, did you eat today? Come over here and get this food. <laughs> but, uh, but driving down. In but a I, white pickup I've never, truck? I've, I've, in a white pickup oh, truck. Oh, no. And, yes, yes. And, and I'll go, did you eat today? Come over here and get this food and water, you know. But, you know, I never, you know, it could be driving down Sullivan Avenue. It could be driving down Fifth Avenue. It could be down Cleveland Avenue. It could be behind Faith Mission on or off Long Street. It could be wherever I load up if I got 30 meals, but it's a way for me to keep myself grounded and appreciative and humble. So my favorite thing to cook would be, 
I, I don't have a favorite thing, um, but there's something about cooking a big Sunday dinner. My favorite meal to cook that takes forever, as people say, I don't want to do all that work, is Thanksgiving. Really? Oh my God, I love cooking for Thanksgiving. Why? I mean, it's, I start like two weeks ahead of time of like prepping. Yes, I love every, if, if ever you wanted anything from me, you just got to just, and it's Thanksgiving. And, and matter of fact, I cook other people's meals for Thanksgiving. They're like, yo, can you just cook my whole meal? I'm like, sure, you know. It's just something I'm just, it's just the gratitude and the thankfulness. I'm glad we take one day to say, this is the time of bounty. Even though we're in a land of plenty, it's not always bountiful for everybody. Mm -hmm. But that one day we try to make it bountiful. And um, my, my family would say, Monique just bought a random people there at the bus stop and they didn't have Thanksgiving meals. So she just, hey, come over and get some Thanksgiving food. So I'm known for just bringing it around to people like, did you eat today? It's Thanksgiving. Come over here and get you a plate, you know. And uh, so I keep to-go containers. People will know you, but like she's got to-go containers. And um, so it's just, <laughs> it's just, you think about that, that's kind of creepy, but. At the same, <laughs> at the same time, like. I but said, it is kind of creepy. <laughs> and that's why I said in the white van, like we. Yeah. I, mean, I, I have a white pickup truck. Yeah, but like, it's so I'll be like, truck. hey, did you eat today? And they'll be like, no, ma'am, I ate in two days. I'm like, here, come over here and get this. Your friend needs something to eat. Take a couple of waters or, or whatever. But when you think about it, I guess they'd be thinking like, oh, I can get away from her. So, <laughs> so they're not really. <laughs> so they're not, they're not, they're not so really fair. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> so, so. Oh, I can I can take her. So, um, but anyway, but I mean that's that's what I'll do. Like the the stop depression, you know. Like I'd have to know there's somebody at least I have shelter. Yeah. Someone else didn't have shelter and they had nothing to eat. Mm -hmm. So yeah. You have to be grateful. And thankful. You have to be grateful and thankful oh, and humble and humble. Never forget. Grateful, Being humble, thankful, humble is not overrated. It's Period. not overrated. Yeah. Period. I know that your meals be having people in the itis. I know. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Just, mm, I know it. I know it. I know it. I hope so. I had, um, I called him. He's one of my church sons. And he came and said to me one day, do you know how many people was eating at this table? And I was like, I wouldn't think about it. He said, no, really think about it. Like, we can't even count how many people that had at this really huge table that like set like 10 people mm -hmm. and he's like do you know how many meals and people have really sat at this table and I was like he's like that's such a compliment because some people be like oh about six of us sit at our table but there's been hundreds of people to come in here and sat at this table and that's what you want you know in life you want people to want to come and sit at your table you know yes. oh my gosh Damn, now I kind of want to try some of your food. Go <laughs> Let me know. I'll cook for you. Oh, please. Tell me what you like. I do love me a good mashed potatoes. Oh, some yeah. Some homemade Macaroni. Bread. I love some mashed potatoes and some I fried chicken. Too. I make some really good garlic mashed potatoes. I and I, and you know what? I have to say, whenever you have grown men come to you and they be like in their 60s, like, and they, they're with their wife they've been married to for 30 years and they go, I swear to God, these are the best mashed potatoes I ever had. And I'd be like, oh, she'd be like, and she'd be like, yeah, they were good. She, you right. You know, it's, <laughs> I'm like, nah. I ain't trying to start. Nah, but, I'll know. whip his ass in the corner. Right. <laughs> <laughs> nah, 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 nah. I don't care. I don't care if it felt like Jesus came and touched your forehead in a cross. But you better, you better say but that. I, do, I, was I, good. I, I can tell you, I've had a lot of people like, hey, and those mashed potatoes, make the mashed potatoes. Like, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna have to hit up this morning. Well, you just call me. 